What's up, Yup Gang? It's your boy Taxon, and welcome back to Yup DBSD Things. And today we're going over another very exciting deck profile, guys. This is going to be a deck that I've seen prowling around my locals, and I just had to swoop a list because I haven't seen it myself yet. So this is Black Promo Broly. But before we get into it, guys, I do want to say if you guys want any custom mats and or sleeves, absolutely check out Promats, guys. This is the best place to go get your custom card needs. And if you guys do decide to get a mat from Promats, make sure you guys use the promo code Yup to save on your entire order. With that being said, guys, if you guys enjoyed this list or my content in general, remember to hit all those buttons for me, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss a video, and with that being said, let's turn it around and check it out. Alrighty, you guys, and here we are with the Broly list that I've seen prowling around our locals and wreaking absolute mayhem on some hands today. So absolutely, go ahead and tell us about your deck and some of your matchups today. So the deck is pretty old. I mean, we're talking like original Broly movie when this came out, so this is just pretty old. Um, it came out with a new Z leader recently and the latest anniversary set, so I figured, you know what, we all played this deck at one point or another. Let me give it a try, see how it works. Um, the deck's not crazy good, but it is insanely fun. I really, really enjoy it. It uses a lot of the OG Broly stuff, so I figured I'd throw it together. And it actually does better than I expected, better than anyone expected, really. So on the front side, when it attacks a leader card, you may choose one life and place it in your drop area and make your opponent discard one card. And then you can choose up to three cards from your deck, place it in the drop area, so it's kind of like a mill situation. It is up to, so you don't have to always go up to three. You can choose zero if you really want to, but more often than not, you are going to choose to mill three just because you do play a lot from your drop area, which is neat. Four or less, you awaken, you draw two cards, just like the OG leaders did. So you're awakening super easy. So usually turn two, turn three, you're awakened, no problem. <clears throat> Backside, when he attacks, draw a card. Uh, you may choose one of your non-black, non-token battle cards sent into the drop area, and your opponent discards one card. Uh, there's a few cards that you're able to occur nowadays that help you do that. We'll go over that in just a minute. The next event main, pretty neat. You can discard a card to choose one of your opponent's battle cards, no cap, and KO it. So, built-in discard, built-in KO, even for an old leader, it's, it's pretty nifty. So, yep. No cap whatsoever. And it just says, one of your opponent's battle cards. So yep. That's actually really clutch. If your opponent tries to homicidal clone you or something, you haven't used that skill yet, boom, clone is gone, no block to deal with. Yes, it is. So it's pretty cool. So right off the bat, I'm going to go off, go over the Z leader just because the Z leader is kind of what makes this deck key at this point, what makes the whole engine work. So when you are at four or less life, which you're going to get there super easy, two energy goes over the leader, uh, double strike inherently. And then when he's played over the leader, you get to play this old school set seven ISR leader, which I'll go over that in a minute. And then when this card is played, um, play this card, activate main, you can choose one of your non-black battle cards, place it in the drop area, force your opponent to warp a card from their hand, and then they can, you can warp a battle card either a uh, battle area as well. So constant removal, constant control, really, really good. When this card is played, um, he has a permanence, uh, green permanent. If he sees any other card other than green, he's technically not supposed to be played. However, this Z leader ignores that permanent, so you are able to play this card free, no problem. Yep, when you're playing with this auto specifically. So he ignores the, the anti-green bullshit, so plays automatically. When he's played, you get to play one early battle card, and it should cost seven or less from your hand. So really, really huge. There's a couple Broly's out there that are really, really good that you're going to play with this card. We'll go over those in just a sec. So now starting with Ruscio's, I play four of it. Uh, just because it is a card, I need to make sure I see. Oh, please, it from the drop area, if I didn't mention that. So that that's key. So that's why whenever you're on your front side, uh, usually you keep milling until you see this card and a couple other cards to get your engine going. So I play this at four. I absolutely have to see it in my drop area one way or another. So keep milling until you see it. And you have other ways to put it in the drop area from your hand as well that I noticed you use as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll definitely easy, go over that. Easy to get in the drop area. It is. You just have to see it at some point or another. Either draw into it or get into your drop area. One way or another, you have to make sure you see it. So it's a four of. So going into the Broly's that you're going to play, I chose OG set one. I'm only running this as a three at the moment, but I'm definitely going to up it to four just because I want to see more of it. Uh, set one, when this card is played, uh, your opponent just discards two cards. Very simple, but he is a 30k double strike. But effectively, he comes out for free. Literally as soon as you pay two energy to play this card, you play this card, 
this one comes out for free, so it's literally two energy for literally all of this, which is just insane. So you're getting two energy, you're getting a 35k swing, 30k double strike swing, and two cards discarded, plus his skills. Well, also, 30k double strikes, a 35 single strike, and discard two for two energy. Plus, warping a card from hand, warping a card from uh, your... So that's three, three cards, one from field. That's a, that's a crazy combo. Yeah, it's it's pretty insane. So, so that's one card that I will play in search of that. Um, more often than not, though, if I see this one, this is the one I'm going with. Also, going to bump him up to a four of because he is nasty. Um, OG sex six card. I love this card. His biggest issue in the past was he was very hard to play. There was too many steps just to get him out, so he wasn't really played all that much. He was designed for the OG Broly. This Z-Val card completely eliminates that problem. When he is played, he's critical. Barrier, which is huge, makes him hard to get rid of. Um, when he attacks, you can burst five. If your opponent has four more cards in their hand, you look at their hand, make them discard a card. Or if they have three or less cards in their hand, he just restands himself. So you're either discarding a card, or if they're low enough, which this deck can do it, you can ask uh, Tax in here. Um, I got him down to zero hand at one point. And it's effectively a dual attack, 30k critical, which is massive. And again, and the barrier. With the new ban list making God Seal not playable anymore, just makes this card so much stronger. Because it's first off, it's a seven cost, so it's weak to Frieza, right? But it has barrier, so it's not weak to Frieza. Nope. And now we don't have to worry about God Seal. So all <coughs> these steps to get this set up is not something we have to fear to get counterplayed anymore. Because nothing is stopping a seven cost 30k from hitting the field. Right? Unless it's like yellow and they play it in rest. Yeah. That's about it. In which case, you're going to try to go for this Broly Bar for that, just to make him card. But in any case, getting him out on the board for two energy is still huge. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention, at the end, at the beginning of your opponent's next turn, this card does disappear, so it is important to run multiple copies. Um, I actually think that's a good thing, because number one, 30k on your opponent's turn is a little busted, but that means you get to play this card over and over. So every turn, if you've got the spare energy and you've got the spare resources, which I do as many times as I can, you're spamming this. Four of in your extra deck, and it comes out every turn, and every turn you can literally do this combo if you got them. So we'll go over some cards that kind of help you do that. I've got a couple cards in here, a couple cards that just came out that help you recycle and search these cards. Uh, going back a little bit to help kind of search for your Broly stuff, since they're all standard Broly's. OG set one Broly searcher. Very simple, search top send for a green Broly. Uh, not much to say there. Obviously, all of your cards, they're all standard Broly's. You can grab each and every one of them. So, search them out. Not much to say there. Very simple. More or less, you're probably going to be looking for like the seven drop and do it. More often than not, yes. But like I said, if you somehow... I do remember you saying the eight drop off this guild plays with drop area, right? Yes, it does. Yeah, so you more or less want to burst that eight drop. You're looking for the ones that play off of that eight yep. drops auto when you play. That's okay. That's what you're doing. But if you're unlucky and you don't happen to burst this, then it can grab it. So that's just that's just good to know. Because like I said, this card is key. You Especially have to see this. One. You go first, and that's your turn one play. You find that without yep. even having to use your leaders auto the spare ones. So continuing with the Broly Spree, um, spoiler alert to the Secret Rare one, you can take a guess. Uh, this card, you discard it, activate main, pay one energy, you can grab a, a battle card from a drop area with Agent of Destruction in its name. That's all I use it for. I don't play it, I don't do anything else, else with it. It's also searchable by the Broly if it really comes down to it, which is really nice. So we will discuss the secret rare that comes with it, as we just throw it out there now. Is he searchable off the one drop? Yes, he is. He is searchable by the one drop, and he is grabbable by this if you're using your drop area. So if you burst him, you just grab him with the agent. Yep. If you haven't bursted him yet, you just top seven search for him with yep. the Broly. Because the way this card works is you can send, in order to get the remove skill for the warping from the card from hand and warping from field, you send one of your own cards to do so. Uh, you send your either your eight drop boy or your seven cost boy, he comes out. So, so you don't even need to run the pair against the sacrifice. You do not. Your leader does it for you. Well, actually, even your standard leader will do it for you. So, I mean, you didn't have to see if you can get that skill. So that's just that's just huge. What does the secret rare do? So the secret rare, old school, 
Um, when he is played, you have to discard all of your cards in your hand, which is kind of rough, but he is a finisher, so that's what he's designed for. If you are at one life um, and he swings, your opponent discards all of their cards as well, and he's a dual attack double strike. So if you got your opponent, if you're able to get to the one life and your opponent doesn't have any gates on that first swing, they're discarding their whole hand and they only got two life, it's game. So once you get that, uh, to your awakened side, is there is there still any good amount of like life control in the deck left or no? Not with the leader that's built in. I do have a couple cards in my deck personally that I'm running. I am also yep. Yep. So I do run a couple cards that do that. We'll go over that. We also got options for things like surmounting Vegeta and the Z deck to help you get there. Yep. I'm not, which I'm not. We're currently running because I have it in a different deck, but that is definitely a card I'm going to throw in here. My Z deck right now is not optimized just because I wasn't 100% sure what else to throw in here besides this. Because I never really, I honestly didn't think this deck would be all that great. I just kind of threw it together for fun. And it turns out it's actually pretty fun and actually does some pretty crazy things. I just have to learn my. Yeah, so I just. played Gamma 1 2, and I was like at one or two cards going into my turn 3. I was like, wow. Yeah. So this card is new, designed specifically for this deck, which is another reason why I threw this together. Um, it's a villainous card for Black Rolly specifically. Um, his. Auto is when he attacks, you choose one of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of three and send it to the war, pretty good. I almost never play this card. The main reason I run him is Raz activate main. Um, limit one, you can send him from your drop area to your warp to grab a non-super combo Broly, energy cost of seven or less, to add it to your hand. So he can literally search out this boy and this boy. So if he if they get milled, which they're gonna get milled unfortunately, there's not much you can do about that, you can grab him from your drop area. So you have to worry about losing. That's extremely powerful. So you run three copies of this, three copies of this, yep. and four copies of this. So yep. essentially you're running seven copies of each of these cards. Yep. Very So very, very, very huge card. Very huge. Big. So you mill it, you can get your pieces back. This card, really, really fun combo with this set, with this leader specifically. I discovered this by accident. Um, this card was a promo specifically designed for the hand control Green Frieza that came out in set 10. His skill is really, really cool. When he's in your drop area, you can discard one green card, pay one green energy, and you can play him from your drop area. And then if he's removed from your drop area by skill or KO'd, your opponent has more than five, five or more cards in their hand, they discard a card. It is really, really fun to use this with this leader because you can literally discard a card, pay the green energy, play it, swing with this leader, use this leader skill, send it to the drop area. If they have five more cards in the hand after all of this resolves, they're discarding two cards. So very huge. Another, another huge thing to find out about this card is this is going to be one of the enablers to get your eight drop same berserker into the drop area if you're failing the first entry. Yep. Uh, so early game, let's say <coughs> any any point before your Z leader, if you uh, burst this card with this, yep. you pay one on like your turn one or turn two and just pitch your same berserker from your hand and you're you're, you're essentially set up to awaken yep. and go straight into this. It's, yep. it's nasty. It is. It's nasty. It's really fun. And I literally watched you use it. And that's exactly what you did in our matchup, so it's, it's, an, it's an enabler. While yes. at, at the same time of being a great green card, it's an enabler for the deck. So, so talking about cards that kind of helped me self-awaken a little bit. Um, Newfound Power Gohan, real OG set 4 card. Um, when you swing with it, you can take one life and give him critical. Um, good self awaken, also good resource control. Um, diamond reason why I run it, of course, is to get myself down to the one life so I can potentially go into my one play. But it's also nice because I take my own life. If I want to like um, speed my waking up a little bit, so you know, say I start the turn at six life, I use leader skill, you know, swing, take a life, and then play this card, swing, take another life. I'm at four energy, I can start this combo. So. He's got a few different uses. He's also green, so another green card is card for that. So that's critical pressure too. Dude. Yep. You can never deny turn one crit pressure, dude. No. You're gonna add a card from your life to your hand, so you net value off that. Yep. While at the same time forcing your opponent to either pitch a negate from hand, pitch combos from hand, or just pitch a life to the drop area. Yep. So in my opinion, e either way, do that card. It's a way. Like yep. So obviously. This is a black leader, so we had to include a lot of black staples, and this card is technically a uh, mill deck or burst deck. So we run the basic free mill package. 
I mean, not much to say here. Yep. Self-awaken and defense because your hand with this leader, because it does cost two cards every time to use the skill, your hand is going to be lower more often than not. So this card, it's plus five edition, is almost always live. Uh, for you, those who are not familiar, each of these cards, when it's sent from your deck to your drop area, they play for free. Um, the Trunks is a blocker. When he is played, um, you can choose up to one life and add it to your hand, so you can help self awaken a little bit faster, or you know, get your cards down, or get your life down in order to play the secret rare skill. And then the Kai, um, she plays herself. If you have five or less cards in hand when she is comboed, she gains plus five combo power. So they're just defense, strictly defense. Yep. So. Nope. Especially since you're milling constantly because this guy, you're bursting five every time you swing with him. It is very possible. I've done it a few times to get two of them out. Um, one previous turn. Yep. Yep. So you are milling a lot. So these never go out of style. Having a card that's going to light late game is very important. Yes, it is. Going down to that one life is super scary. So speaking of cards, you're getting in your drop area very easily. Why not? Um, haven't used it a whole lot, but I'm definitely going to keep these in here. They're just good. Not much to say. Um, activate main, pay one energy. You can shuffle, or not shuffle, it's place two cards at the bottom of your deck and then draw more cards. So it's kind of like a shuffler. kind of helps you circle, circle through, excuse me, cycle cards. Thank you. Helps you cycle cards a little bit. And then more importantly, if your opponent plays any cards in your turn with uh, power and anything less than uh, 20k, then they have to warp two cards from their hand. Which is essentially every card that gets played during your opponent's turn. Yep, so all your free counterplay cards, your unison counterplay cards, or... Most arrival pieces. Yep, yep, so you're already doing it. There's like one arrival card that's a 30. Yeah. So, like, I mean, unless you're versing blue-yellow, Quetzal Kai's probably going to stop whatever your opponent's doing. Yep, and it's already a hand control deck, and this deck hand controls really, really well, so this is a massive deterrent for them, because if they attempt to play anything on your turn when they're trying to do stuff and they have a low hand, it's almost a game. But this, this card can definitely win turn tides very, very easily. So any burst deck, any deck that sends cards to the drop area very, very easily, this is kind of a staple, in my opinion. So super combos, best choice in my opinion. Um, sparking five, you're going to hit that sparking five by turn two, maybe even turn one if you see the right combos. So that like a no-brainer to me. Your energy, you have to have at least one green energy, and the deck is a rough mix between green and black, so I can't really do the mono black very well, and obviously I can't do mono green because my leader's not green, so this felt like the best choice. So That makes a lot of sense. Vegeta is not going to be live, so that's out of the picture. Yep. You don't want to be at, uh, I mean, I guess you can do it with more or less, but that's probably not going to be as live as quick as Nope, so because this is live turn two, no matter what. Be, I use this skill two times, but it's live. It's, it's, yeah. So, yeah, just felt like the better choice. And speaking of mill cards, this is a decent card. Sorry, this card was shockingly, like, a really good matchup. When I personally build any mill decks, I always try to include at least two or three of this card. I've always liked this card. It's a fun card. It's universal. It's very uh, versatile. You know, it's in the gate, and then if it's in the gate, you don't ever see in your hand and it gets bursted or whatever, then it's a K1 draw. <coughs> Excuse me, which is huge. Because it's so versatile. You can always use this thing as like a, a pitch target off of like your floodgate or yep. something, and then just next turn draw off of the effect and you don't lose off your pitch, uh, off yep. your floodgate. So it's good just about it. I love that card as well. Yep. One neat thing about this deck is you're effectively to get its main key play off to build off its main engine. If you see all of your cards, you're realistically only using two energy each turn. So like once you start getting into your later games and whatnot, you're not using a whole lot of energy. So like you got room, you got some energy to play with a little bit. I might even throw some of the draw apes in here just to kind of help my hand a little bit. I haven't quite decided. Like I said, I did not put much thought into this deck. I just kind of slapped it together to see if it would be any good. And I am about surprised it's probably anyone else's. I am going to definitely put some more effort into it, try and make it better. But it's just good. It's in the game. It's also a draw. It's versatile. Can't really go wrong with it. 
good pitch target off all these girls. That too. Going off of Black, Self Awaken, uh, the token Black Creator. If you're at five or less life, play this card. Um, you can either pay the energy cost, or if you're at five or less life, you can pay life, create a token blocker for the turn. Not much to say. Good card. Elves, Black. That's about it. <clears throat> also, too, since you know you don't have to be at five life, you can be at two life and activate the card. It kind of helps you put that that one life spot for your uh, secret rare, so that's also a thing. I really like how it, I really like how it can set you up to awaken with this leader without having to uh, attack first. Yeah. Because the leader to take a life you have to attack, which will make you lose out on your backside auto. Yep. So I like that you can use that, take yourself down to four defensively, stop two attacks, and then on your turn before even the swing, awaken twice, up to two. Yep. Yep, so, so on, so on. We, we get that. Four power burst, not much to say here. Um, turn two, you're going to have that Sparking Five ready immediately. Um, it also recycles your Kai's, your one drop Kai's that give you combo power. So, like I said before, this deck, because you're discarding two in order to use the skill, your hand is usually pretty low. So, her combo power, her skill to get plus five combo power is almost always live. So, she gets recycled with this card. It's Sparking, so it's every. By turn two, this card's live. Self Awaken, Negate. It's like one of the only negates in the game that'll let you leave the situation plus. Yep. You negate, that's a card from hand, but then you take the card from life, that's that card back, and then you get its effect to go grab a one drop. You actually yep. plus on this thing, it's very good. Hard plus too, especially depending on what you grab. Because if it's that Kai, it's basically yeah, another super another combo. And last cards, more generic, good, black. Petrification, really, really good card. Um, <laughs> Your leader card is black, you get the attack, choose one of your discarded cards, choose one of your opponent's battle cards. If you place a card in the drop area, you ignore this barrier, you can get any skills for the turn, and it also can't be comboed. Um, the way this card is rolled, it can actually stop on play, or on attack the gate, or on attack autos, which is crazy. So, the main reason why I run it, it's just a good card. Because it happens in the counter timing, it stops any skills from activating. So even yeah. though it is pending, it cannot activate after the activation of this counter. So, <coughs> so you're running a black leader. It's a good card to have in a two-up at least. It stops a lot of big threats in this game. It does. It stops your dual attacks, stops also, your big it's attacks. It's also one of the few cards in black, uh, obviously besides uh, the Hamasato clone style token blocker. It's yep. one of the few cards in black that actually stops two attacks. Like you can negate an attack with this and then choose an, a completely separate card and yep. then you know give the effect to that card. And, you know, so very strong, I agree. Yep. Necessary. All right, so that's it for that. All right, so obvious choice, um, three. This is going to be up to a four, because like I was saying earlier, you want to span this out as much as you possibly can. It is that good. It is that worth it. So a fourth one will definitely be added. And for the rest of it, it's really just kind of green, generic, good stuff. Um, there is only six in here at the moment. The seventh one was going to be uh, the Vegeta one draft that lets you cycle, take a life, etc. But I just kind of forgot to add it. That's on me. Um, Jiren, most people aren't familiar with. Um, he's a really good finisher. Deflect um, when he's played. If you're a leader card, or sorry. <coughs> um, he's a very interesting. He's like, he yeah. five or less on your side of the field and he can't be removed by any skills. Yeah, so you choose himself, obviously. And then activate main, you place any amount of Z energy on your, place any amount of Z energy in your drop area, remove a marker from your opponent's unison for each one you dropped. And then if you do two or more, I think, he gains 10k and double strike for the turn. I have actually yet to play this card, so sorry, I had to read it real quick. I kind of forgot what he did. Um, I read him like once, this is the only copy I have. Um, it's very hard to get off in green decks, to be quite honest. Yeah, I've noticed that. He's not very easy to get out, period. So, I mean, he's just in here because at slot, I guess. So, I mean, not a big deal. Um, I threw this Broly in here. He's not bad. If your leader card is a Broly, which of course he is, he ignores the specified cost, which is pretty cool. And then he can't be KO'd by skills in the battle area, which is really nice. When he attacks, you can choose a green or red battle card from your drop area with its skills negated and draw a card. Or no, draw a card if you have four cards or less in your hand, which normally you will with this card. So he's in here mainly for that. And then activate main once per turn. You can 
discard a card, take a life. Again, really, really good with this leader. You can either make your opponent discard a card, or you can choose your when you make your opponent choose. Excuse me. Choose up to your opponent's battle cards with 20k or less and KO it, so versatility. But I have yet to play this card, but there are a couple situations I can see in the future where I might want to, so I'm probably going to up this to a 2. I kind of like the act that they made. It's basically your leader auto on her side, right? A little bit, yeah. You discard one card from, well, it's more like the green, the green Broly's auto on Yeah. But in any case, if your hand is low and you're just looking for swings and you're looking to discard or self-awaken, he's got it all. It's good. It's decent. It's in your Z deck, so it's not taking up a whole lot of space. So, I mean, it's whatever. So I'm probably going to throw one more of him in there. All right. He's actually pretty good at the end, in my opinion. He is. If he doesn't get removed, it's just a card from his hand every single turn. It is. Putting you closer to your secret as well. Or KO. And then the Frieza, probably the best green generic Z card out there, even though there's really not in any way. So, really, really cool. And he's played. You can choose one of your opponent's battle cards, five cost or less, and KO it. And then when another one of your cards attacks, not him specifically, but another one of your battle cards attacks, you can't place one Z energy in your drop area. If the card attacking is energy cost of two or more, then your opponent just cards a card. So, I mean, not bad. Decent. You can't do it on his swing, but you can do it on another copy yeah. of himself. So, if you were to play two of these guys and swing with them, you can proc each other's autos on each other's swings. In my case, it would more be playing him when I have other Broly's out. So, if I've got... Swing with the crit, yep. first five, make them dis or go through their hand, take yep. a card, and then, of course, this would proc it. Yep. Yep. So that that that'd be the main reason for anything else. But yeah. So I'll probably keep one of in here of him, and then what I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably take the Jiren out. My main focus is hand control anyway, so he doesn't really do me a whole lot of favors. I have plenty of double strike finishers in the deck as is, so it'll definitely be four of this, and then probably probably one, and then one more of this, and then I'll probably my or two more of that, probably. So, yeah. Yeah, something like that. It's up in the air. Uh, Matchups today, my first one was unfortunately a bye, so that doesn't really count. Yeah. However, I did play test the stack quite a bit beforehand, and I did win a couple games against that. Um, the hand control aspect is really, really good. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, I think for me personally, I just have to work on my sequencing a little bit to get better about it, and then I think it'll be a lot better. Uh, game two was against. It's been minutes since you played black or green. So yeah, it has. It's been minutes since I played period, because I've been out for a second, because I haven't played in over a month. Uh, second game was against Yellow Slug. Uh, that deck draws a pretty insane amount of cards and is pretty good at pulling out pressure. I was still able to get his hand down to three or four cards toward the end. It literally came down to 5k combo power. If I, I super comboed, he had just enough combo power to beat me. Had I drawn one more card, one more card, one more 5k combo power, he wouldn't have been able to beat me. Turn when it went over, I think I could have won. And then the game of matchup, you saw uh, that one was streamed. I got his hand down. I couldn't win. I couldn't get his life down. I, I couldn't quite get started as well as I wanted to, which is more me just not sequencing properly, but it's, I did what I was supposed to do. I got his hand down. I got him down to zero at one point, so I call that a win. So I, I want to ask you something really quickly. With the introduction of the Z deck, do you think, now that you're playing a hand destruction deck, do you think that that changes the pace as a hand destruction player? Like, after delivering your opponent's hand to damn near zero, which in most cases your opponent wouldn't be able to do nothing on their turn, do you think now having that Z deck, does it make hand destruction a weaker choice in terms of deck building? It definitely does. It is something you have to take into consideration now. Uh, for example, I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! I played Yu-Gi-Oh! for like 15 years. Um, decks that have a lot of, they call it the extra deck, which is the same thing as the Z deck. Decks that have extra deck dependency, when you are dealing with any kind of resource control deck, whether it be hand control, field control, energy control, it doesn't really matter. That is definitely something you have to take into consideration. Um, it, it definitely makes it more complicated because there's no way to target the Z deck currently. So that plays a big part. So yeah, hand control, I definitely feel, is going to struggle in the future until we get more Z, either Z deck, uh, or Z deck interaction, or just more ways to do, I don't know.
but I. My opinion is still it's a very controversial topic because if you think about it, hand destruction naturally keeps you with, with no cards in hand, no resources to use from hand, which naturally, in terms, would make sense. Like your opponent shouldn't be able to generate Z energy, correct? Because you'd have to combo it to, to generate the Z energy. So I don't know. That's just where that's where I'm like I'm at kind of like a middle standpoint. Like I feel like Z decks are going to make hand destruction harder to play while at the same time hand destruction is going to make Z deck cards harder to play. I think in the grand scheme of things in order for hand destruction to really succeed past the extra deck because of course you're talking about you're talking about very specific decks. You know, some decks, you know, it's just this deck, for example, it has to have its Z deck in order to play. It has to have its Z leader in order to do what it's doing to be good. Other decks, the Z deck is literally just like an extra, just like, you know, an extra resource to do stuff, to help with stuff, to complement other cards, but not necessarily, you know, like completely turn over a game of sorts. Um, I do know that in a lot of cases, green does have a lot of cards um, within its own archetype, within its own color that do hit cards at the combo step, which can prevent Z energy from being charged. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that, like the Bardock, the Paternal Unison, I do believe it's called, uh, that came out in set 10. We're probably going to see a lot more of that. I do think for hand control to be better against decks that depend on the Z deck a lot more, those cards can become a lot more necessary. So that is something I... I uh, if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember what color it is or what character is on the card, but I do remember this, this skill here. I'm pretty sure there's a card that says when you combo with this card, you can remove it from your combo area and choose a card in your opponent's combo area. So maybe that's something that we can utilize. Definitely. Anyways, uh, any final, that was your deck list, that was your matchups, any final shout outs, any, any final thoughts on your deck? So shout out to uh, Yup Games as usual. Love coming here every Sunday, playing great times. We all play janky, weird stuff, and we all have a lot of fun with it. Um, we encourage meta, of course, too. Just, you know, the rest of us would rather play stupid janky bullshit, but we dabble in all sorts. It's a lot of fun. Definitely enjoy coming here every single Sunday with all the game. Um, shout out to Jesters as usual for hosting us, always being good to us, being kind to us. They've always been good to us from the get-go for taking us on. And thoughts? Same as always. Meta isn't always right. Um, this deck... It's fun. It's crazy. I think the Z series in general, adding all of these extra cards, I think it's a fantastic addition to the game. Helping utilize, revitalize old decks, old art types, let them do their thing. I'm really, really happy with the way this uh, the game's going right now. So especially with uh, Gatsy only being hit, that that uh, that that needed to go. With that being said, that was his list, you guys. If you guys enjoyed this deck list or my content in general, remember to hit all those buttons for me. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss a video. And with that being said, we will see you guys next time.